The sciences involve making measurements and all measurements need units. In this section, we will learn the seven fundamental units from which all other units are derived. We'll also discuss metric prefixes and scientific notation, which make it easier to represent very large and very small numbers. When humans make measurements, they need to be able to communicate these measurements to other humans. Units are standard measurements agreed upon by humans all around the world, allowing us to communicate what we measure. Very importantly to this class, numbers cannot be separated from their units. When we get lazy, it's tempting to write only the number, but this will lead to confusion and ruin. Please get in the habit of keeping numbers and units inseparable. There are seven fundamental units from which all other units are derived. While the process of deriving and interconverting these units is more the realm of physics, you will need to be familiar with the top five units of this table. You will also need to be comfortable using these units in algebraic expressions. For example, volume is length cubed. Reaction rate is the amount of reaction divided by the total time. An important example of volume being length cubed is the milliliter. One milliliter is identical to a cubic centimeter. You will need to know this conversion because it comes up all the time. The measurement of density is derived from mass divided by volume. In section 1.7, we'll learn about conversion factors. And in this course, we'll use density as a way to convert between mass and volume. Anytime we have two units expressed as a fraction, we can use that fraction to interconvert between the unit on the top and the unit on the bottom. For example, one milliliter of water weighs one gram. We can use the density of water, one gram per milliliter, to convert between volume of water and its mass. One of the coolest parts about sciences is its scale. From the very large to the very small, we have scientists studying it. So naturally, scientists need a way to represent gigantic and teeny tiny measurements. We have two ways of doing this, decimal prefixes and scientific notation. You are probably already familiar with some common decimal prefixes, but you'll need to know all the ones in bold on this list in order to succeed in this class. Just as importantly, you will need to be able to convert between metric prefixes. For instance, to answer questions like, how many milliliters are in 2.9 liters? We won't do any converting in this section because section 1.7 will introduce a systematic and bulletproof way to convert metric prefixes and more. Lastly, a tip from a pro, your calculator has a button which represents times 10 to the power. In most calculators, the button is labeled with a capital E or EE. I really recommend finding and using this button. It will save you a lot of time when you're calculating with scientific notation, which in this class will be often. Here's the location of the magic button on a few common calculators, but if you're having trouble finding or using yours, feel free to ask me.